Would you please read the items? Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so, hello everyone, uh, and thank you so much uh, for the quick introduction uh, to Python JP. And I'm so excited to present here at uh, Python JP today. So, my name is Kalyan Prasad, and today I'm going to talk about neural profit, a powerful AI from uh, time series models. So, here is a quick uh, intro about me. I'm a self-taught data scientist and analytics manager, and I've been contributed to a lot of uh, real estate communities, and I love involving in those communities and help those communities grow. Currently, I'm associated with the following organizations called Python India, Python Fighterbad, PyPy, and Humans for AI. I have a very different roles in each of the organizations where I play different roles and different uh, uh, contributions which I made to this organization so far. Uh, apart from that, I'm an average speaker. I always uh, love to give back, give back to community. So, oh, so I always look for opportunities to share my knowledge wherever possible I can have. Uh, that's pretty much about me. So here is the agenda for today's talk. So we'll start with an intro to time series, then uh, we'll cover talk about what is neural profit and uh, why we need to use neural profit and what exactly the difference between the neural profit and the Facebook profit. Then we'll see some uh, hands-on part where we'll see some action about neural profit, and then we'll wrap up our talk. Okay, uh, without any further delays, let's get started. So, introduction to time series. Before I tell you about introduction about time series, I'll tell you something about time series. Time series is one of the critical and you know, very complicated field in the industry. And it requires a lot of experience and a lot of domain knowledge and you know, a lot of exposure in order to do some time series modeling in a real time. And uh, so you have to be, you know, you have to read a lot uh, in order to know much about time series. Okay, so what is time series? There are so many definitions of the time series which are available on the internet, out of which indicate same meaning in a different way. A very straightforward definition is sequential data order matters. Time series is a sequence of observations taken sequentially in time. When we are talking about time series data, the main aim is to estimate how sequence of observations will continue in future. For example, it may be weekly, daily, yearly, monthly, etc. For example, if you are talking about weather data, we may receive weather updates for every 10 minutes or every hour. If you are talking about something called IoT census like that, where we see the data generating continuously. So depending upon the source of the generation, we may have different frequencies at which data is collected. Advancements in machine learning have increased the value of time series because there are so many prediction problems that involves time component. That is why it is like boom, boom, booming in the industry now. Organizations apply machine learning to time series model to do forecasting. They would like to compare the seasonal and cyclic trends to analyze the insights. Because time series forecasting helps us to predict the future values of a business, which has a potential business value in the industry. So, for example, predicting the health condition of a person or predicting the performance of a sport or predicting the performance of a player based on the previous performance or the previous data. I believe that time series has literally spread his wings across everywhere. So that is why it is like everywhere now. Now, here comes our main topic, neural profit. So here is a quick visual representation about neural profit. It is a Python library for a time series forecast modeling data. Neural Profit uses neural network as a backend, and Neural Profit uses neural neural network which has a PyTorch as a backend, and it has a modular architecture that allows so many futures to be plotted in the future. This library is heavily inspired from Facebook Profit in auto regressive net libraries. And this library was developed in collaboration by researchers from Stanford and Monash University. What more do you need to know about neural profit? The best thing is, this is a very beginner-friendly library. 
one can easily set up and start building time series models. It addresses pain points such as scale, customization, and extensibility. This library is completely scalable and you can also customize or adjust your model according to your needs. Of course, you can also edit and manipulate the code without modifying the existing core code base. That's the beauty about neural profiter. Just like profit, neural property is also decomposable with all time series components like trend, seasonality, auto regressor, future regressor, laggard regressor, recurring events, etc. This library is an absolutely an updated version of the profit because it uses a deep learning model such as ARNet library for time series forecasting. Why we need neural profit? It aims to solve the seesaw of uncertainty. So what do I mean by this point here? I assume you are aware of autoregressive models. Autoregressive models are nothing new, but usually it would use a linear regression fit with least squares instead of a neural network fit with a back propagation. Autoregressive neural network may mix the traditional autoregressive model process with a neural network because it is a single layer network that is trained to mimic the autoregressive model process in the time series signal, but at a very large scale comparatively with the traditional models. That's an amazing thing. Autoregressive net model auto scales much better to the larger data and more inputs. For example, if you look at the below graph here, the training time of a ARNet model doesn't increase exponentially with AR order. So the training time autoregression model takes much less than comparatively with, you know, if you see the autoregression order, that's an amazing thing. One thing I would also like to stress about here is about the p-values. The p-values here are the number of autoregressors used in the autoregressive models, not those p-values which we use in the hypothesis testing. So this is something you should uh, Keep remembered here. Neural profit also upgrades the profit linear external regresses to feed forward network because the deeper is equal to better, which means the better you train the models, the better you will get the accuracy and the better we have the results. That's the beauty here about neural profit. Lastly, you are adding neural networks to the profit has a downside because it drastically, the learnable parameters increase dramatically. So to cope up with that, Neural Profit relies on PyTorch as a backend instead of SAN, and it trained with a stochastic gradient descent, so which makes the modeling much faster comparatively with SAN. So that's, that's the reason the speciality of the Neural Profit. Now, here comes the difference. So as the name suggests, Neural profit is similar to profit, but it throws some neural networks in the mix to spice up things. So when we are exploring time series data at any point of time, we will definitely encounter a popular package called you know, Facebook profit because it has gained a lot of popularity due to the fact that it provides a very good performance in terms of accuracy and interpretable results. The best part of Facebook profit is it automates a lot of elements such as hyperparameter tuning and feature engineering selection for the users. That is why Facebook profit is a very straightforward to use for data scientists or any other folks who are playing with time series data or even for the folks who have very less technical knowledge they can also straight away use the Facebook profit. When it comes to neural profit, the author also had the same thing in mind for this library to retain all the advantages of the profit by improving the accuracy and scalability. Using autoregressive net, <clears throat> the scalability of a neural networks with the interpretability of the autoregressive models. So that's the beauty of the neural profit. And lastly, 
So here are the some of the core differences between the neural profit and neural profit, and these differences or these features are involved in neural profit comparatively with all profit. So what are what are these uh, key differences? Let's understand why neural profit is better uh, or also faster than the profit. Gradient decision for optimization. As I mentioned earlier, neural profit relies on PyTorch as a backend, which makes modeling much faster. So that's so it trained on the gradient descent optimization. And time series autocorrelation is modeled using the auto interfering neural network, so which makes the modeling again much faster. Language resources are trained using a separate feed forward network, so, so which, which trained the highly better, highly scale, the highly trainable comparative traditional models. Additionally, this model is also configurable to non linear D players of the feed forward networks. That's an amazing feature, I think. And it also offers the custom losses and metrics. Apart from this core features, and the great feature of a neural profit is it also uh, it also gives a developer access to the auto ARNet library, which was developed by Facebook researchers. So that's that's something amazing about the neural profit. So I think so far I have given an end of a GAN or a theory on neural profit. Let's see some action now and understand how neural profit performs in, in real time. Let me switch to my code now. Okay. I hope you see my code screen now. Okay. Awesome. So basically, uh, so this code notebook goal is to show you about the neural profit, how it is used for time series modeling. And it also showed various techniques involved in neural profit. And we also visualize and interpret some manipulations to, with the time series data here. Okay, let me firstly quickly install my neural profit. So there are multiple ways to install neural profit. Uh, it, so the one thing is you can straight straightforward pip install neural profit, you can do that. Or uh, if you want to install uh, neural profit uh, in a Jupyter notebook, you need to install pip install neural profit client. So this will enable the live plot for both uh, no, training and validation loss. Apart from this, uh, if you want to get an up-to-date version of a neural profit, so simply go to the GitHub page and uh, you know uh, just clone the repository and start playing with it. So it's up to you how you want to install the library. So for this demonstration, I have used the uh, live here. Okay, I have already installed. So this notebook consists of a two sections. In the first section, we'll see how to create a simple uh, baseline neural profit model. And in the other section, the next in the section two, we'll see we'll also look into some additional information information which plays a uh, very uh, importance in the neural profit. Okay, we'll see one by one now. As usual, we'll import message suspects here. So I will put a pandas, matplotlib, uh, matplotlib line, seaborn, and neural profit. And from neural profit, I will also input a random seed. Then I will give a random seed with a random number. Here I'm giving as a zero to ensure that the, uh, whenever it runs, so <clears throat> the model should be always reproducible when the subsequent model runs. So it should be reproducible. That's it. And uh, so for this demonstration, I have taken the retail CSV data from the you know, neural profit page. So, so let me, uh, so I'm reading the data. So let me execute this. <coughs> okay, sorry, uh, I should put my library first. <coughs> it should take a couple of seconds uh, to install. Uh, So feel free to, so far, if you have encountered any questions, feel free to wrap in chat. I'll definitely answer each and every question to you all. Uh, okay, let me read my CSV data. So here are the first 10 rows of your data. And let me also read the last 10 rows of your data. Okay, so we have read the data. So just like profit also, neural profit also requires to manipulate, uh, to do some manipulation from the data frame before we pass it to our model. 
So what I mean here is, so all we need to make sure here is the date should be in a uh, correct object, which is a date time object, and the date column should be named as a DS, and the predictor parameter or the predictor variable which we want to predict, that should be named as a Y. So in our case, which we have already done, so we don't need to do any reformatting yet because they, so we have done date as a DS and you know our predicted value as a Y here. So we are good to proceed further. So we can simply create a new profit model and validate with very few lines of a code. So 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 uh, so what I'm doing is I initiated a new profit model. Say, and so I can also so here. There are so many options and also parameters which we can also pass to neural profit to improve our results here. But what? But for now, what we do is we keep uh, we 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 keep things simple. We keep things simple and we'll train a simple baseline model here. So that's the reason I'm just initiated the model and uh, I'm not passing any parameters here. Then again. Then I'm calling my fit function where I'm passing my data frame and also the other three parameters. So what are those three parameters are? So validate each epoch is nothing but whether or not to validate the model performance on validation data for each epoch. Value P, it's a, it's a float between a zero and one indicating that the proportion of a data should be used for a training. And frequency is equal to D, which is nothing but you no. Know, we are uh, we are uh, using a daily frequency here. Plot live loss, so where you will get a you know a live plot for both training and validation loss, which you'll see in just a couple of seconds now. And epoxy is equal to twin is nothing but the number of uh, epochs that should be used for training here. So let, let me execute this. Now you will see uh, a live plot here. So if you observe the graph and notice how the live plot and you know, uh, our uh, model epoch are updating for each epoch, how the plot and loss values are updating for each epoch, you can also see once again now. So see and notice how the you know, loss values and you know, plot are updating for each epoch. So you see how it changes uh, and updates the value. So that's amazing. And now, so we have, so far we have the uh, creative model and validate. So now we'll generate a prediction. To generate a prediction in a neural profit, we need to create a feature data frame. So as the name suggests, we need to create a new data frame of the date that extends our original data frame. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a feature data frame here where I'm calling my model and making a feature data frame. I am passing my data and I'm giving period as 365. So I want to create a future data frame for an all next one year here. So then once I have created the future data frame, now I am passing my future data frame to predict function to return the forecasting data. Okay, so let me execute this. Okay, there we got the future data frame data. So just in case if you are unsure whether it is a future data frame or not, so Better to cross check here. For example, our data started at the period 1992-0101, and our data frame ended at 015-2016. And if you go back to our future data frame, it has started with uh, 025-2016, and it has ended at 015-2017. So we got our future data frame here. That's beauty. And Another amazing thing here is it also generate the Y hat predictions and also the trend and seasonal yearly value. Here. So we also got these values here. So that's an amazing year. One thing you should also remember here is it is expected that you know Y values and residuals to be done. That is an expected behavior behavior here. So you don't need to get panic when you see that. Okay. So that's pretty much okay. We are good now. So let's plot our forecast now. So plotting our forecast is very simple and straightforward. We just need to pass the future data frame to our model.plot. So it generates our future 
which generates our forecast plot. So, so by looking at this graph and notice that how our model is able to learn the seasonal parameters, seasonal patterns, sorry, seasonal patterns for our retail CSV data. So you can see how the model is able to learn the seasonal patterns uh, for our retail CSV data. And the best part is we can also plot the model components as well. So let's see. So it is also similar to same what we have done. So I'm just passing my future data frame to model plot dot component. So once I plot this, so we get our trend and seasonal yearly values here. So this look a solid decreasing trend for retail CSV data. And also if you look at the seasonal yearly value, particularly December being the busiest month uh, for retail sales comparatively with other months other months so that's that's amazing so these model plot components are really important for domain expertise because they visualize these model components to gain insights in the overall modeling process and adjust their modeling accordingly so this plays a very important uh, uh, for uh, domain expertise and also so these model plot components and this process is known as time series decomposition. So this is pretty much. So, so far we are good that you know, we are able to understand how we can create a simple baseline model with neural profit. So that's pretty much and very simple and straightforward. You have seen so far. And next we'll jump into the section two where we'll see why neural profit is so powerful because it takes additional information such as trend, seasonality, auto regressors, and triggering events into account. So we see all these things one by one and understand uh, the much better about neural profit. Okay, let's see this in action now. So for this demonstration purpose, I have taken a different data set again from Kaggle, which is a Nifty 50 index data. Okay, which is a stock market data. And I'm, so I'm taking Marathi company here and I'm reading my data. So here we got a multi data here with a multiple columns. Okay, let's also look at the info about our data frame and also the shape. So we have total 4,427 rows and 15 columns for this data set. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, uh, so we need to do some reformatting on the data frame before we pass it to our model. So this is what exactly I'm doing here. So I'm taking date and VWAP. VWAP is nothing but the volume weighted average price. So this is a trading benchmark for the trader that gives an average price of a security that was traded throughout the day based on the average and the number of volume. So this is this this price is really important for the traders because it throws some insights to them based on the price and you know the value of the security. So this is really so I have taken this column so for our prediction. Okay, so I'm reading, I'm reformatting that then again. I am changing my date to the daytime object because if you see here, our date is an object. So, but uh, but our date should be a, in a daytime for more the past to our time series model. Not for this only for any sort of a time series, we we need to have our daytime should be in a daytime index rather than an object. So so we, we should always try to you know reformat the date should date column should be make sure that you know date column should be in a daytime object. So this is what exactly I'm doing here. So I'm just taking my date and applying pd.d time. So this will convert the object from no object to daytime object. And that's it. So I've done reformatting. And here we get the date and the volume weighted average price columns. So it's cool so far. So what is trends? So in general, a trend exists when there is a long term increase or a decrease in the data. It does not have to be linear always. Uh, a trend might change its direction from you know increasing trend to decreasing trend. So there is something about the trend. So we'll see uh, uh, how uh, how the trend can perform in our data, and we'll find out what we have identified from it. So I'm calling my new data frame and pass this column volumeted average price and simply plotting it. So once I execute this, so you'll see. You see how he based on this graph and notice that you know, it shows a general increasing trend uh, 
uh, from uh, particular year. So, so it's, it's a very solid increasing trend, and particularly where you know at some places where you know price rise and falls uh, particularly, but most of the time it shows a general increasing trend. And particularly where at some time where you see the price was uh, falling and it was rising. So, so we call these as a change points. So with this, with this as a base, what we'll do is we'll now train our neural profit model on the our monthly stock price, considering trend as our first, uh, considering trend as our first priority, and we'll build a model. So which means that we'll consider only trend as our first priority, and we'll build a neural profit model, and we'll see how the results will be. So. As I also mentioned earlier, so we need to change the names of our columns before we pass it to our model. So that's the reason I'm changing my date to a date DS and you know our predictor parameter to DS Y. So this is what I'm doing here. I've done here. So we got our DS and Y. So we are good now. Let's create our uh, trend model first. Okay. So with neural profit, we can simply create a trend time series model by passing a very few parameters here. So what I'm doing is, so here I have initiated a neural profit model and I'm passing few parameters, which has nothing but n change points. So n change points are nothing but specifying the number of points where the broader trend, where the rate of a price increase or decrease when the data changes. So that's all about the parameter. Trend rate is nothing but it's a regularization parameter that controls the flexibility of the change point selection. So these two are the primary parameters for trend model. Apart from that, you can also see here different parameters like yearly seasonality, weekly seasonality, daily seasonality have given us a false because we are only focusing on the trend here, not on seasonality. So that's the reason I have, uh, we have kept those parameters as a false. Okay, so now we have initiated our model and then then I'm calling my fit function where I'm passing my data and also the other parameters. So you have already seen these parameters in the first section. So I'm passing the same parameters here and let me execute this. So, so okay. So, so, so if you see here the loss plot, so just, just look at this loss plot and uh, see you notice what you have going. I'll explain these things, but observe the lost blood for a couple of seconds. Okay. So the lost blood here looks a bit compromising. Okay. But however, it seems like, you know, after a lot of volatility, the model has converge. So what I mean here is, <clears throat> so in order to better understand this, let's we'll visualize our prediction and understand what is this all about. That. So what I have done is, I've created a function here called plot forecast, okay, where I'm passing my model data periods, historical prediction, highlight steps ahead is equal none. So model is nothing but our neural profit model here. Data is nothing but the number of periods which uh, the data is nothing but, sorry, the data which we have used for our training and periods are is nothing but the number of periods which you want to forecast and historical predictions is nothing but whether or not to plot the model predictions on the historical data. Highlight step is equal to none is nothing but is equal to the head of a steps to highlight the forecast line. So this is only possible with the auto regression models. So I've done this, then I'm creating my future data frame here, as we have seen in section one, so we have to create the future data frame in order to generate predictions. This is what exactly I'm doing here now. So created future data frame as my data period, historical periods. And then again, uh, I'm passing my future data frame to predict function to return the forecast. Excuse me, have, excuse me, the time is up. Let's please wrap up the conclusion. Excuse sure. me, Kayan. Okay. Yeah, 30 minutes, you left 30 minutes. How much time I have? 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds. Okay. Only the, please wrap up, the, wrap up the talk. Okay, so, 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 okay, just a minute. So, so 
that's the reason so i've just executed so once i do so you'll see the plot and uh, so this is how you train uh, the model in over so i've taken different things into the concentration uh, but you can play with it i'll give you four code and understand but on an overall like what i would like to tell you is uh, so there is so much more you can do with neural profit but i believe this is a uh, Every, this is at least plenty that you can easily get started and uh, okay sorry for the time so i was not able to walk through the entire code uh, here but uh, but feel free to reach out to me and here are the quick references uh, for exploring uh, the neural profits so so feel free to check it out and you know play with neural profit and if you find anything or if you have any question or if you have anything interesting with neural profit so feel free to let me know i'll also happy to look into it and uh, learn from your stuff and thank you it's always uh, take the time to take seriously i respect the time and uh, definitely in case if you have uh, anything or any suggestion for any comments or any feedback for me feel free to uh, reach out to me on my social media handles that is skippy flow and kalyan so i'm happy to address all the things and thank you so much again pycon jp for the wonderful opportunity to share my knowledge and presence and apologies uh, for no running short of time here and uh, thank you so much uh, to all the organizers and, and everyone in uh, the conference yeah thank you very much and uh, now just before the finish uh, i i i want to i want to ask one request for you kayan yeah can you check the the discord channel and we mentioned you uh one mention and uh, there is a url url link oh yeah uh, this is a code of conduct you're supposed okay. to read before the talk and please take and click yeah it. sure sure i will do it sure i'll fill it out and i'll fill it on okay this, so, okay i should okay okay sorry i should read. Uh, uh, after the uh, please read out this conduct okay yeah, yeah so I agree uh, to have my picture taken during my presentation. I will comply with the Python JP code of conduct. Ah, oh, uh, I will you will you publish the presentation material? Yes, yes. I will also allow you to publish the materials and uh, publish the video on the JP. Okay. We, yeah. Thank you very much for. We're happy to hear that. And uh, thank you very much. The time is up, and uh, this is that's it. Thank you very much, Karyan, and uh, thank you for listeners. Thank you. Thank you.